welcome everybody. We are so happy you are here today. I'm Dr. Ellen Armbruster, and I'm here with a wonderful panel of school counselors, as well as my colleagues, Dr. Sherry Pickover and Lindsay Karmanowski. Um, I'm the coordinator of the school counseling program at Central Michigan University, and I'll just hand it over to Dr. Pickover to announce, um, introduce herself, and then Lindsay, if you don't mind doing the same thing. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Dr. Sherry Pickover. I'm the program director for the CMU Counseling Program. Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Lindsay Karmanowski, and I am the assistant director of enrollment for the Grand Rapids and West Michigan for CMU's global campus. And sorry, I should have said during the webinar, I'll be monitoring the chat. So as questions come up, you'd like to pose the panel, please go ahead and feel free to chat those. Or if you have questions about the program um, while the webinar is going on, I'll be also happy to respond to those as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, again, welcome to everybody. And we are here tonight to talk about the profession of school counseling and what that means becoming an advocate for children and adolescents. So if you've ever considered becoming a school counselor, there's some questions you might have thought of or you might want to think about asking yourself. For example, do you enjoy interacting or working with children and adolescents? I always say the most important thing is to love kids. If you love kids, then you're probably going to love being a school counselor. Do you want to make a difference in the lives of young people? Being a school counselor gives you that opportunity in a really amazing way. Would you like to help advocate and help level the playing field for all students? So school counselors don't just sit in a, a back room figuring out GPAs by hand anymore. They're actually out there advocating and helping all students to have opportunities when they graduate. Maybe you studied about families or child development in school. Um, that would give you a great background. It's not necessary, but it would be a, a wonderful way to further and continue your career to become a school counselor. Or perhaps you've worked with kids in a summer camp or maybe tutored young people or volunteered as a big brother or a big sister, or maybe you're a teacher and you enjoy one on one or small group interactions with students. So these are just some possibilities. I'm sure there are many others as well, but some some backgrounds and some questions that might help you think about whether becoming a school counselor is for you. So just a little bit about the nuts and bolts of being a school counselor. It does require a master's degree in school counseling, although no specific educational experience is necessary or, or background jobs. Um, you don't have to have had a certain major in college. You don't have to have had a certain job in the work world um, to be a school counselor just to have had a bachelor's degree um, and to apply to the program gives you an opportunity. So there are lots of school counseling jobs out there. In 2019, there were 333,500. That's a lot of school counseling positions. And the job outlook in the decade from 2019 to 2029 is 8% growth, which is twice the average rate of job growth in the country for for jobs. So um, pretty good, pretty good outlook there. The the projected change in employment in that decade, 19 to 29, is 26,800 more jobs in 29 than in 2019. So that's a pretty that's a pretty good growth rate. The median pay is $58,120 per year which is about $27.94 per hour. So again, pretty good pay. It's a lot, of, a lot of positives about becoming a school counselor. So where do school counselors work and what is their role? Well, as you might imagine, school counselors work in schools most of the time, 
and they work at all levels in middle school, um, elementary school, high school, every different level can have a school counselor. Um, not all schools do. We wish that all schools did, but they are employed at all those different levels. Um, and the, what their role is, is to assist all students to number one, achieve academically, to manage social and emotional experiences, and to plan for post-secondary options. So there's lots and lots of stuff that school counselors do, but those are sort of the three basic bottom line um, responsibilities. So moving on, school counselors are systems change agents who help improve equity and access, achievement, and opportunities for all students. We're not just focusing on a few students um, who are the highest achievers who are going to go to the best colleges. That is not the role of a school counselor. The role of a school counselor is to make sure all students graduate ready to pursue their dreams, whatever those dreams may be. And in order to do that, school counselors provide academic planning and goal setting, um, classroom lessons. So if you're a teacher or if you like being in a classroom, you're still going to have opportunities to go into the classroom and offer lessons on academics or college and career readiness or social emotional issues. Um, school counselors also provide short term counseling for students. If there's a longer term, a need for longer term support, that's usually referred out to therapists in the community. School counselors also do a lot of collaboration um, with the families of students, with teachers, administrators, community members. The bottom line is it's always in the service of the students and helping the students to reach their goals and have the most success they can have. Advocacy for students is a very essential part of being a school counselor. Um, and then finally, data analysis. We collect data as school counselors and we do that in order to identify student issues and needs and challenges. It helps us to do our jobs better when we collect and analyze data. So now I am happy to move on to our panel of school counselors for today. And I'm going to say their names um, so you'll know their names, um, but then they're going to introduce themselves a little bit more fully with the next slide. So today we have with us Lauren Driesinga, Erica Garwood, Romaria Jones, Julia Wagner, and Steve Wheeler. As I said, they are all graduates of CMU School Counseling Program, and they are practicing school counselors, and we are incredibly proud of them. Okay, our panelists, I'm gonna open it to you all, and if you would each introduce yourself, you can use some of these questions if you like. Hi, everyone. So I'm Lauren Dreisinga. I just graduated. Um, in last winter, December of 2021. Um, I'm currently employed in Zealand Public Schools. We have a unique situation with two high schools. So I have lots of kiddos that um, I'm just helping plan for their futures. Thanks, Lauren. Erica Garwood, I graduated from CMU School Counseling Program in the spring of 2019. I work for Mount Pleasant Public Schools at Ganyard and Vowels Elementary, and I have been a school counselor um, since I graduated, so um, August of 2019. Thank you, Erica. Hi, everyone. I am Romaria Jones. I graduated from CMU in December of 2020. I cur currently work for Warren Consolidated Schools. I am in two elementary schools at the moment, which is Jefferson Elementary and Harwood Elementary Schools. Um, let's see, how long have I been a school counselor? So I've actually been a school counselor since November of 2020. 
So I started actually before I graduated, which was awesome and amazing. <laughs> um, so coming up on a year anniversary very soon. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you, Romaria. Hi, everyone. My name is Julia Wagner. I graduated from the school counseling master's program in spring of 2019. And I am a high school counselor at Spring Lake High School. And I am starting the third year of my. Nice. Thank you, Julia. Third year. Wow. It's amazing. Hello, my name is Steve Wheeler, and I am a school counselor in Lake City area schools at the middle school right now. I graduated in August of 2020, and I started working as a school counselor in August of 2019. I was lucky enough to get an internship uh, and job. Is that right? Just about there, right around that time. Um, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. All right. Well, then we are going to move on to our questions for our panelists. And as Dr. Pickover mentioned, if you have questions for our panelists to the audience, if you have questions for our panelists as they talk about their experiences as a school counselor, please write those in chat and then she will keep, Dr. Pickover will keep track of them and we will pose them to our panelists after we um, have them answer our questions. So the first question we are going to ask for each school counselor to give us a description of a typical day in their life as a school counselor. So we'll just kind of go through everybody again with this one. So I'm not sure there's um, a typical day as a school <laughs> counselor. Um, changes a little bit depending on the month of the year, but a lot of what I do is uh, meeting with students, responding to emails from students. Um, and then I do a lot of post-secondary work. So planning for futures, whether this is researching careers with students or looking at college options, consumes most of my time. Thanks, Lauren. So I would have to, this is Erica, I would have to second Lauren. There's not really a typical day. Um, every day is a new day, which makes our profession so exciting. Um, but what I try to get in each day is a couple of class lessons. Um, I always try to meet with students individually and um, just, you know, going into the cafeteria and the playground and different places um, so that I can be visible and so students can get to know me a little bit better. So I just make sure to be around as much as I can. Great idea. It's really important to do that and make sure they get to know you. So I agree. Um, there is no typical day. There are very busy days, but not typical days. Um, so every day definitely looks different for me. Um, by me being at the elementary level, I do a lot of um, rapport building, relationship building. So I am on the playground. I am doing lunch duty. No, I don't do lunch duty in the way of like picking up trays and things like that. But I'm in a, in in the lunch room, speaking to students, talking. Um, just getting to know them so they can get to know me. Um, my structural day looks more like classroom lessons. Um, I do some small groups here and there. I also do a lot of individual work uh, with my students, crisis, behavior issues. So there's always something. So even when you try to plan, a lot of times your plan goes haywire. Um, so for my own mental health, I try to at least do a morning ritual and an afternoon ritual. So in the morning, I always start off at my door greeting my students. Um, and then I try, try <laughs> to check my emails. Um, and then at the day, end of the day, I try to get 10 to 15 minutes before dismissal so that I'm out there as well, sending my students off in a positive way. Wow, wonderful. Thank you so much, Romary, for, for sharing that. I agree. This is Julia. Um, there's not a typical day as a school counselor. Um, my favorite word is flexibility. Um, I think that's the biggest part of school counseling, especially in the last couple of years, um, because when you do plan a day, 
Um, it usually never happens. So there's always, as a high school counselor, a lot of, um, I guess, interruptions is a bad word, but students coming in that need you um, for social emotional problems or parents calling you. Um, but again, a typical schedule would look like Right now, meeting with seniors for post-secondary options, um, college applications, um, and just meeting with students to meet social emotional needs right now. Thank you, Julia. Hey, this is Steve. So yeah, similar, um, but it's my day, you know, you're there before everybody gets there and you leave after everybody leaves and you just be available whenever students are out and about just to have FaceTime but then also you're building rapport every time you're out there and connecting with students. So then if they need something, they connect with you and can, you can help them in a crisis moment. And then a couple hours a day, hopefully um, checking, well, you're, a lot of time with students, about 80% of our time is probably FaceTime with students. And then checking in with teachers, following up on things, following up with parents, making sure they feel supported by the school and help build that rapport between the student and parent and then uh, school. So a lot of that stuff, using surveys to kind of collect data so we can decide what type of programming we want to do in the future. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it, definitely. So it's um, it's good to have kind of an outline of plan for the week and then know that it's all going to, you know, go out the window, but then you try to pull it back together and make it happen. So it's a lot of fun, flexibility, Julia, great word. That's what it's all about. I certainly agree with that. Flexibility, so important. Well, thank you everyone. That was really helpful to get an idea of the um, atypical days that exist for school counselors. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next question, which is please discuss some ways the school counselors advocate for their students and and um, we don't have to have every single person answer this time but i know we've talked in advance who might want to share their thoughts about this question romaria you want to go first yes i will so advocating for my students at the elementary level looks a lot different than even I thought, you know, in school and going in. Um, a lot of my advocating, sometimes I have to do with the parent. Um, just a lot of times um, our parents, because our kids are young or my kids are young, they just, they're sheltered, they're, they're afraid to maybe seek out sad services. They're afraid to maybe explore why the problem is this. And so a lot of my advocating is with parents to allow them to see the bigger picture and see that it's just not um, a behavior that they can correct at home or this is not just the problem with the teacher. Um, a, another area that I do a ton of advocating for, which is not easy, is with administration. Is when they want to implement things that are just not good for the majority of our students or for a special population of our students. So being that person in a room with other, <laughs> not only administrators, but teachers who think ed educationally, these are sound plans and they may be, but you being the SEL person, the counselor, the mental health person and saying, wait a minute, you guys have to look at this because it may not be as good as you think. I love it. Yeah, that's it's all about finding the gaps in education and noticing them, we're looking for them at all times. So anytime there's uh, maybe different assignments that might uh, lift some students up, but leave other students hanging, uh, we wanna advocate with those educators to make sure they see that and have a plan for making sure they're supported. Sometimes it's through 504 plans or attending IEP meetings where we're talking about accommodations to make sure students feel successful in classes. Sometimes it's going over um, a teacher's lesson plan in regards to a holiday that might be uh, culturally maybe insensitive at times. And we wanna talk about that and have a discussion as to how we can be the most inclusive in our classrooms along with our education plan. So it's talking about those hot topics, those difficult conversations and in a supportive and constructive way that helps all students feel included and supported in education. And as a school counselor, we look for those things, um, those gaps that might leave some students out uh, and people might not normally look for them, but that's what we're here to do. So uh, advocating is finding what those gaps are and um, challenging status quo and, and bringing up those conversations to make it better for all students and not just some. 
Yeah, what a what a great explanation you both have given. It's so important to find those gaps and figure out how to fill them. Make sure that the students that aren't being served are served in the ways that they need to be. So great answers. Thanks to both of you for those. So our next question is how do school counselors help their students in relation to college and career readiness? So I can go first with this question. Um, I feel like a lot of the things that we do as school counselors are helping students prepare for college and career readiness, even when they don't know that they are being prepared for that at the time. Um, so in the high school, we start with the ninth grade students. Um, at my school, we have freshman interviews right off the bat when school starts um, and we go through their EDP, their educational development plan. Um, and we start talking about what classes they would like to take in the future. We have them create a four year plan of the classes they're interested in. Um, they have to come up with reasons why they are interested in those classes. And then they also come up with goals as well, um, just to start thinking about their future. Um, another big thing at my high school, um, and I know Lauren's school uses this as well, um, but we use Naviance, um, and this is a college and career tool. Um, it's kind of like career cruising. I know that that is a pretty popular one at some schools, um, but this tool allows us to give career interest inventories to students. Um, they can do college searches. It's a really amazing tool that we've been using for the last couple of years. Um, so we are using that with all four grades. Um, we do classroom lessons. We meet with students individually. Um, and so that's been really great. And then another big thing that we do, um, we have college days, um, career days, where we bring in different colleges to talk to our seniors. And then we also have a career fair for all of our students each year. Um, but there are a lot of little things that we do every day that are built in to help students prepare for those post-secondary options. Sounds like you are really um, doing a lot at your school, Julia. Thank you. I agree. I have to second most of what Julia shared. Um, career days, uh, lining students up with the career and technical education, um, planning college visits. We have a lot of those in the fall, especially, but just encouraging some of those students who maybe still haven't applied come Christmas break, keep, keeping those kids on the radar. Um, at the middle school level, it's a little bit different, but still doing those EDPs, the educational development plans, and really focusing on, yep, you're only in eighth grade, but where are your interests right now? your interest could make a solid career in the future, a job that you love going to work every single day. Thanks, Lauren. I love how you tie their interests into what might be a career in the future. That's fabulous. Okay, let's move on to the next question, which is, please talk about the CMU Masters in School Counseling. Did you go to school full or part-time? How long did it take? What were the classes like? I know I'm on for this one, so I'll go. Is that okay? Or Erica, are you about to go? Hi, Steven. Okay. Thanks, Erica. Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. How did the master's courses help? They were the best. I, I was full time, I was a full time student, and I was working full time also. So it was tough. It was a lot of work, but um, I was lucky in the career that I had had prior to being a school counselor. I was, was very relevant. So the mental health information, the counseling information I was learning was very relevant to my position. So it was very helpful. The class times are great. The availability of the professors is really game changing. Um, you're, you're not just having a college professor, you're, you're collaborating with people who are future peers and you're really working with them and learning from them. That's awesome. Uh, the CMU counseling department has really great staff that are very supportive uh, and helpful. Classes are very engaging. Uh, you do fish bowls where we do role playing. Uh, we practice a lot. We do a lot of really fun stuff. Um, and it's we do challenging stuff too. You have those difficult conversations. You go through that on your own. You're, it's almost like going through 
um, just a journey to learn more about yourself through education. And then you reflect on stuff that you learn and how it impacts you as a person. And uh, I'd say I'd change just going through the program as a person, a professional and um, a helper also. So just a lot of ways this program meant a lot to me as a person, but professionally, it's I feel very prepared for my career uh, because of the program. So I just, I really have nothing but good things to say about it. Thank you, Steve. Thanks. Uh, ditto, Steve. Uh, the classes were really engaging and um, you felt like you were in a safe place where you could share personal experiences and not feel judged. So it's a really good place to you know, really talk about how you're feeling and, and it really does, you know, remind you why you want to be a school counselor. Um, cause you know, it's a hard profession, but it's really, um, rewarding. And I went to school, I guess, I don't, I don't know. I think, I guess part time, I'm not sure, but I, it took me about two and a half years. I also, worked for or served for Michigan Education Corps, um, which is like a, an affiliate of AmeriCorps. And I did reading tutoring at the elementary schools, which was really cool because um, when I was looking for a job, I already kind of had my foot in the door at one of the Mount Pleasant schools. So I would encourage you to, if you are working um, or looking for something to do while you're in your graduate courses um, is to look into the opportunities that are available at schools. That is a great point, Erica, to be thinking about that in advance. And it gives you great ex experience. You learn about working with kids and it's going to probably give you a little bit of a um, head start on getting a job when you do go out to get one. Okay, thank you for those perspectives. Wonderful, wonderful to hear that feedback from, from you all. Um, all right, so our next question is, after you finished your MA in school counseling, did you have to get a license? And how did you do that? I can answer this. Um, so after you, I finished all my classes, I had to create a account to pick an exam date. And then I did some studying, lots of flashcards. Uh, and I studied for specifically my counseling endorsement, which is an NT endorsement. Um, I didn't continue on to get my LLPC because working in a school, you can just add an endorsement onto your teaching certificate, or you can take this examination and get your NT. Um, and I got that after I passed the test within probably a month, I got my license. And then now I'm a licensed school counselor, got my job a month after getting that license. So it was a pretty smooth transition for me. Great. So I um, am not a teacher. I was not a teacher before coming into the counseling program. So my process looked a little bit different because I did have to get the school counseling license. Um, in my experience, and I will, I, I think I will recommend this for some, especially if you're not in the school and you're looking to get the, the actual license. Um, I took my MTTC test for school counseling prior to being finished with my classes. And I did that just in case I failed, but of course you go to CMU and you would not fail. So I didn't fail, but just in case I did, I wanted to have that time to retake before completing, before graduating, so that there was no delay in finding work and starting a job. So um, there is a test that you have to take for the state of Michigan to, um, to get your license, your school counselor license. You do need to create an account with the Michigan Department of Education You'll submit all of your personal information as well as the school that you are. Um, you can do this prior to graduating as well. So you can put in there what your expected date of graduation. Um, you put in there any other degrees that you may have earned. And then that information is sent over to your school for, you know what, I do apologize. I think that was for the temporary license where it's sent over to the school. So they hold your information. Um, they do ask 
for you to send in your transcripts and, or verify your education that you graduated. And then once you pass the MTTC, that automatically goes over if your profile is created and you have everything in order to get your license. So the senior link, you pay your money and you have your license. Um, so it's a relatively easy process, especially compared to getting your LLPC, which I did do both. So the LLPC license is a little bit more complicated um, there's a couple different applications, a um, couple different websites that one you may need some, some help walking through, <laughs> but um, to get the school counseling license much easier and it's pretty simple. Good. Glad to hear that. It's not too, not too difficult to get that. And our next question is about finding a job. How hard was that? Was it difficult? Did you have to look for a long time? Did you find a position quickly? What was that process like? I'll go first. Um, well, it wasn't so difficult. I guess it maybe just depends on the year, but my experience was um, that there were a handful of opportunities within the Mount Pleasant and surrounding areas. Um, so I felt very grateful for that. Um, it was challenging because it was my first job and a lot of schools are looking for school counselors with some experience, of course, um, that makes sense. So it was a little intimidating, but um, it was, um, a really good experience going through all of those interviews. Just the practice and the more that you do, the more comfortable that you get. But yeah, for me, it just, um, I, you know, was able to get a job about a month after graduation. So that was really wonderful. And I know that we are in desperate need of school counselors right now and there are so many openings and so please 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 go into the school counseling profession because we need you um, and I don't think it'll be too hard to to find a position because our job you know the job growth like Dr. Armbruster mentioned is growing exponentially um, and after these last couple of years of COVID um, Mental health services are so desperately needed. So that was my experience. That is a great point, Erica. It's it's kind of the pandemic has sort of changed the face of counseling in many ways, and this is one of them. Uh, I'll go next. So my experience uh, um, was a little a little bit different. So I went into my internship at my current school knowing that there was going to be a retirement. So, so my goal at the end was to get that job um, when and the person retired. Um, but I was nervous um, not having any experience, not knowing what the future looked like. So I did about 15 interviews um, before the interview for my job that I have now. Um, I started interviewing in March and then my interview for my job that I have was in May. Um, so I think that was the scariest part was turning down a job offer um, at another school, not knowing that I didn't have a job um, in the future. Um, but I was offered the job on graduation day. Um, so I was really thankful for that, um, knowing I had a job going into the summer. Um, but like Erica said, um, there's so much need right now for school counselors. And I know just my county and district alone, um, we are looking for school counselors. And that is a part of the strategic plan for the future as well. So please become a school counselor if you are interested. We need you. That is wonderful to know that it's part of your school's strategic plan to be looking for more school counselors. Great news. Wonderful. Okay, well, I think that brings us to our final question. And again, we would like to hear from each of you. What do you like the best about being a school counselor? Now, I know that's a hard question. If you need to choose more than one thing, that's okay. But what, what really draws you in? What do you feel the most passionate about? Or what do you love the most? 
I'll start. Um, the end goal is obviously servicing students. And um, my favorite part of being a school counselor is just knowing I made an impact on some kid's life. Some days it may not feel like I did very much, but when it's said and done, just the impacts that I am making on their lives is why I do what I do. Thank you, Lauren. I'll go next. Um, there's a lot to like about being a school counselor. Some of the things that make me smile though daily is when um, you hear students um, using the skill that you taught them in the classroom or in an individual or small group setting, um, knowing like, like, for example, I went into classrooms today and I walked out of them thinking like, oh my goodness, they had no idea what I was talking about and just kind of feeling defeated. But then, you know, later that day or um, that following week, you hear reports from teachers about how the students were using the language that I used in, in the classroom. So I just love that my message is being received, even though sometimes it doesn't always um, feel that way. So yeah, I think that's probably my favorite part is just hearing them um, have those takeaways from our lessons. Wow, that is so wonderful. You get to like have that feedback of your impact with the students. That is really wonderful. So I will go next and I definitely agree that there is more than one thing that makes me as a school counselor off awesome. Um, I think I'm going to just summarize it to making an impact and working with students. Um, no matter how small it is, it's there. Um, working with the kids is great. It keeps me there um, because the job can be challenging. It can be very challenging and very overwhelming. But seeing the smile on the kid's face or being that person that the kids specifically ask for when they're having an issue makes you know that it's all worth it. You know, I consider myself a counselor in the school. I don't mean a man called a school counselor, but I'm a counselor. I'm, I'm a mental health professional, and that makes me very unique in the school. There's not many, if anyone else in the school like me. So I can help students in a way that nobody else in that building can. And for me, that, that does the trick. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Thank you, Romaria. Yeah, great answers. I mean, for me, it's the transformation of a school when you actually have school counselors who are doing what we do. Uh, we are using data, we're using programming, presentations, crisis management, we're using our skills to transform the school in a way that I, I don't know. I think it's unique and I think it's a need. I think it's something we're shifting from, you know, responsive to crisis situations towards proactively making a cultural um, experience for students to feel supported and safe in school. And I think what we do directly makes that shift. We're, assist we're making systemic changes in public education or whatever school we're in, that's what we're doing. So for me, my favorite part is um, planning it <laughs> and executing it and, and revising everything and trying to make those shifts. So I just, that big picture thing is really exciting kind of intimidating and scary, but also awesome and um, messy, but but really um, inspiring. So that's that's my answer. Nice, very nice. Yeah, I agree with what everybody said, um, but just being able to be that one person that a student can trust and feel safe with in a school um, is really important to me. Um, and also, I'll add, I really like graduation day as a high school counselor. Um, I think it's really to see, really special to see students get to that finish line um, and celebrate with their families and all of their accomplishments. Um, so that's just a really special day that I like to be a part of and see as well. But lots of great things as a school counselor, like everyone said. Goodness, I'm, I'm just, I feel inspired just listening to all of you. That was just fabulous to hear your responses there. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. 
And now we're going to see if we have any questions from our audience for our panel members. Are there, is there anything that maybe the audience has been thinking of and wanted to um, find out while you all have been talking? So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Pickover, um, who has been monitoring the chat for questions. Um, we do have a question about the program, which we'll get to after. Um, but so, um, does anybody here have any experience being a school counselor outside the state of Michigan? They may not have yet because they, they've just graduated recently. I do have experience being a school counselor outside of the state of Michigan. And what I will say is that um, there are differences between states and what some of the requirements are. So in the way that licenses or certifications work. So if you are going to be a school counselor in another state, like let's say you want to um, go to school in Michigan, but then you think you'll be moving to another state that does happen. And actually one of our recent graduates is now a school counselor in Utah. Um, so we do have people do that. It's just important to, if you can look in advance and see what the requirements are there and find out what the application process for their licensing or certification credentials might be. And then the next question, which we'd open to the panel is, do you ever feel overwhelmed and how do you deal with that? Yes, <laughs> especially being a school counselor in the midst of a pandemic, um, you do, you just start to feel overwhelmed. Um, I think having your resources, like knowing what you need for self care whether that's some time alone or some time with friends or some time with your own personal counselor, um, knowing what you use as self-care and then reminding yourself, okay, it's okay to pencil in time for things that I want to do. I'm not always a school counselor. When I go home, I like to hang out with friends. So just um, self-care, that's my big plug, self-care. Excellent idea. We all need to do more of that. I would definitely agree with that self care. And for me, this school year, um, which has been extremely stressful already, and it just began, began is also penciling in some of that self care time within the school day. So, um, utilizing it's easy for a school counselor to not use that prep period. It's easy for us to cut our, sh our lunch short because there's a crisis, but ensuring that I'm sticking to that, that I'm using prep time, that I'm taking my lunch away from my work. Um, so self-care is huge, but I also would like to say um, for your first counseling job or your counseling job, you might not be in the building with another counselor. Um, so it may just be you and everything falls on you because that's my case. And leaning and depending on my coworkers, even outside of the school, counselors specifically. So other counselors, depend, leaning and depending on it, on them, we do WebExes, we do Zoom sometime in the middle of the day just to rant and rave because we're all going nuts. But that helps so much because it refocuses us. It also, we can get um, advice from one another when things are really perplexing us. So being able to lean on your professional family, in essence, is, is a plus as well. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to skip to the next question just in the interest of time. So someone asked, can we connect with the panelists on LinkedIn? And also, what is the best way to get your foot in the door at schools? Any interview tips? I jumped in as a parapro. So I worked in inpatient psych and I jumped in as a paraprofessional uh, in the school just to learn what schools uh, settings were like. Uh, so that was a great way for me to get into the district I previously worked at just to learn about it. Um, yeah, that's my quick answer. LinkedIn, though, I have more email. I don't have LinkedIn yet. I haven't used it yet, but I hear it's a great site. Yeah, um, I was it, a teaching assistant um, at a middle school. Um, and then I also did the reading tutor or reading interventionist position while I was in the program. So. Um, and I coached at a high school too. So those are a few different ways that you can um, get a foot in the door at the schools. 
One thing that I did that was really helpful, um, I joined the West Michigan Counseling Association um, because I wanted to get a job in West Michigan. And so that allowed me to connect with a lot of school counselors in the area. And that's how I met people and found out about jobs before they were even posted. Um, so that was really helpful as well. I substitute taught in um, the West Michigan area because I knew I wanted to end up in West Michigan. So I did the whole county um, and then I just picked up sub jobs here and there. And then I kept my um, ears open in the different schools for positions that were opening up. The next question was very similar. So if anybody else just has anything to add, which was what experiences, volunteer or otherwise, would be valuable if they're coming from a non-education field, but hoping to get into the program? I never, real quick, never planned on working in a school. Never wanted to, never dreamed of it ever, even when I started the master's program at CMU. But I worked in inpatient psych, which was suicide prevention and stuff. I have to say, if you work near or live near an inpatient psych hospital, behavioral health technicians, getting in and learning you're in that crisis setting gives you a lot of experience. Six months in that setting is, isn't a, a lot of time. So you can learn a lot in that setting. Uh, and that's insurmountable or, I don't know, invaluable experiences for schools as well. Yeah, I would say volunteering or working or serving in any type of helping profession or a profession that um, involves working with other people. That's what I would um, encourage you to consider. And I was a secretary in the school and I, I actually got into being a secretary at the school because I thought I wanted to go back to be a teacher, but I also wanted to, I hadn't been in school in a long time. I'm like, I'm not sure if it's the same as when I was there. Um, and that's how I got to counseling. I went back and said, I don't want to teach. I want to do something that's a little bit, I wouldn't say more impactful, but more um, one-on-one, -on -one, more directly, you know, working on things that the kid needs versus what we have to teach them and things like that. However, I will say the biggest tip for me with my interview, because even though I was a school secretary, I was a secretary. I wasn't with students. I didn't have that experience. I think the biggest thing for me in my interview was knowing how to be a school counselor. I didn't have the experience, but I knew I was educated well in those courses. So picking a program, picking a school like CMU, absorbing all the knowledge that you can absorb. And when you go into those interviews, even though you don't have the experience, if you know your counseling skills, if you know what you're doing and you're confident, you can answer those questions just as well almost as a person who has experience. So I'm just going to ask one um, more question of the panel, and then um, some of the other questions are specific to the program that we're going to go over um, after this last question. So um, for folks not already working in education, what are the pros and cons of specializing in school counseling versus clinical mental health counseling? Can I say was... snow days? <laughs> no, the, the school calendar is amazing. Um, having breaks especially being in the mental health profession spring break comes at the right time you just need a break um but also uh, yeah i i was always kind of interested in school so i guess somebody who maybe wasn't thinking school uh what what is what is the biggest benefit of school i would say that you can do both so if you specialize in mental health, you're in mental health. And if you decide you get out there and you're a therapist, a mental health therapist for 20 years and decide, oh, I'm going to try school, you can't. You got to start over. With school, you get best of both worlds. And the mental health portion or the, the clinical side of it just helps you more with your students. So you're not losing or you're not taking something that you may never use because you're going to use every single bit of it. Actually, my mental, the clinical mental health classes probably helped me almost more than my school counseling classes because we deal with real issues. We're not, we're not just, you know, preparing for college. We're just, we are also dealing with suicide, suicidal kids, kids with great anxiety, with depression. Like we're dealing with co-occurrence co and disorders. Those are things that you learn on the mental health side that we also need in the school counselor side. So if you do school counselor, you get the best of both words. You can be a school counselor during the day and be a mental health therapist in the evening. 
double the money. Like it's so many benefits, you know, school break. Like you, you can be a mental health therapist on summer home. That's the second job and you can do it at your time. Like it's so many benefits to specializing in school counseling over the clinical mental health. This question is why I went school counseling and I did both. So I kind of like where Mary is saying I do both. But I went school counseling because of the prevention side of it. So from the inpatient psych side of clinical mental health, I was working with suicide uh, on a clinical in the clinical setting, and I wanted to get in front of people. To me, being a helper, I want to I want to make the biggest impact for the largest amount of people. If I can get successfully get into a school and get in front of mental health crisis, I can educate students so they don't have to go to inpatient hospital, which is what I'd like to avoid. School counselor role, you're going to have the opportunity to do that, to build a district-wide program that can change lives in a way that you just can't do on an individual counseling basis. So for me, that was why I wanted to add on and do school. And when you go to school counseling classes, that's what you're focusing on. How are you going to make systemic change for this community to change lives in a way that you just can't do in any other way? So that was what pushed me to go both school and clinical. I always wanted clinical. Everybody knows that all my professors did, but I also really wanted school for this exact question. So I, great question to ask. Thanks for asking. All right, Dr. Ron Brewster, we wanna. Sure. Um, so we'll thank you everybody for those wonderful questions and wonderful responses. That was really helpful, really interesting. Um, we're going to move on now just briefly to tell you a little bit about our school counseling program at CMU. Um, it is 60 credits and we are recently KCREP accredited, which means that we have a, a national accreditation for our school counseling program. Of those 60 credits, some of those are core courses and some of them are school specific. So courses like child and adolescent counseling, introduction to school counseling, post-secondary planning, school counseling seminar, all those kinds of things are very school focused classes. Um, there's a, there is a wide range of coursework that is included. And I think most students find it of great interest, very interesting coursework. Um, so the next part of this slide actually speaks to one of the topics that was coming up um, in the questions, which is that this degree, the school counseling degree, actually leads to three different possibilities, possibly an endorsement on the Michigan Teaching Certificate. That's if you're a teacher and you have a Michigan Teaching Certificate, you can add an endorsement to be a school counselor and then you're endorsed as a school counselor, or, or I should say, and, or, um, you will, when you finish this program, be eligible for the Michigan School Counselor License, which is through the Michigan Department of Education. And then finally, as others have alluded to, you would be also eligible when you finish the school counseling program to apply for the limited license professional counselor credential, which leads to the LPC if you choose to obtain supervision and go through that process. So it is, in a sense, um, it, it provides um, a dual um, career pathway to do this program. The class, the coursework can be done either part time or full time. That's usually two or three classes per semester. And most of the courses are in the evenings and we do have um, weekend clinic hours as well. Oh, and we are very excited to announce that we have an online option starting in the fall of 2022. So we're super excited about that as well. So I'm going to answer some of those questions um, that asked about our online program because we were getting to them. Um, so someone asked if it was available outside Michigan. It is. Um, there's four states we're not allowed to operate in, and I just can't remember them off the top of my head. Um, but they're all, they're all on the East Coast. Um, there's four of them. The courses, um, our programs in Mount Pleasant and the online program will be very similar. We're going to have courses that will be live online where you'll be in class like you are here and others where they're called asynchronous online, meaning you um, log in every day into a Blackboard shell, a learning management system and do work. 
Um, it would be between one and two nights a week. Um, our plan at this point would be Tuesdays and Thursday evenings. You might have one class in an eight week period. You might have two classes in a 16 week period while you're going through the live part. The asynchronous courses are all eight weeks long. So I'll turn it back over to Dr. Armbruster. I just want to make sure I answered those questions. Yeah, thank you. We are really excited about our upcoming online program to be able to add that to what we're doing at CMU. So just a couple of more um, things to share with you. We have a 100 hour clinical practicum. We have an amazing um, on site clinic that we, where we are um, providing telemental health as as well as face-to-face. -face. So even if you're doing the online program, you could potentially still have the ability to do a practicum through that um, clinic. And if not, we also have the option to do um, on-site, like school-based kinds of practicums if you're in another location, for example. We also have a 600-hour school internship. And if you are a teacher, this potentially could be accomplished in your actual school. It usually takes a little bit longer if you're working as a teacher, because obviously you're working during the day, um, but it can be accomplished. Students have done it before. We, we have a wonderful honor society. It's called Chi Sigma Iota. Our chapter is the Mu Cap Mu Kappa chapter. It's an international honor society that is very active in many ways. Um, in our program. We also have a lot of professional development. We offer topics like diversity and human trafficking, and your faculty has a lot of different research interests as well, including children, adolescents, families, addiction, LGBTQ populations, spirituality, mental health needs, and Sub-Saharan Africa. So there is just a lot to learn even beyond the classroom in our program. So that concludes our um, program in terms of the, what I'm going to say, but we would like to ask if you have any further questions. Um, we'd be happy to answer. We have time for one or two more questions if anybody has anything else that's coming to mind, either for the panelists, for me, for Dr. Pickover, anything about our program or anything at all. And I'll just add, if you're interested in an online program, um, where it's going to begin in fall of 2022, if you go to apply, it's not going to um, click down yet. It'll still say, um, it'll only support of choose Mount Pleasant. So don't panic. You can go ahead and apply and indicate somewhere on there that you want the online program and we'll get you routed where you need to be routed. Um, we're hoping to have the application up within the next 30 days. Okay, then. Well, thank you all so much for coming. Oh, I see another question coming in. I couldn't quite get it. Did you get that? Sure. Um, I did. Well, um, Lindsay, thank you so much for putting the application <laughs> link in the chat. And if you did a part time online, it's three to three and a half years. The half is really about how long your internship takes. Um, also, one thing that um, I, th I think is a huge um, huge proponent for school counseling which you're so excited about is you have the option if you um, you take your mttc which is the michigan test of teacher certification for school counselors um you're approved um, dr arm brewster works with you very closely to make sure you're ready and we approve for you to take the test you are eligible to get a preliminary help me ellen what's it called now it's the preliminary um Let's see, preliminary school counselor credential. Preliminary so school CSC. counselor. Yeah. Sorry, right. and it, yeah. And it's um and so what that means is that you're eligible to be hired in a school paid during your internship, which is um something that's only available to school counselors. Mm -hmm. And and it is a really wonderful option because as long as you've taken all of your coursework then you can apply for that and because there is such a need for school counselors and really we're getting you know we're getting 
advertisements and requests and you know principals writing to us on a regular basis can you send us some school counselors so we're thinking that some of those options really are going to be available and so it might be possible for school counselors to um, be able to you know get paid essentially for their internship and Romari, Romaria is saying that's exactly what she did and so she had the option or the ability the opportunity to be paid for doing her internship as a school counselor so really wonderful wonderful option for school counselors and dr pickover's right other um, concentrations don't have that option so it is kind of a nice thing for school counseling all right then well we are at six o'clock we've kept you for an hour i just want to say thank you thank you thank you to our panelists that was just amazing to hear your thoughts and, and hear your answers, your responses to the questions. I feel like I learned a lot and I, I hope that our um, attendees learned a lot as well. Um, if you have any further questions, you are very welcome to contact me. Um, Dr. Ellen Armbruster, I am the School Counseling Program Coordinator at CMU and my email is written right here, but you can also find it on the CMU website. So please feel free to get in contact with me, or you're also welcome to contact Dr. Pickover if you like. Um, we would be more than happy to help you in any way that we can. So thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Pickover. Thank you, Lindsay. And thank you again to our panelists and to our attendees for being here. Thank you for having us.